The idea today is to talk about the history of programming. And that's what we're gonna discuss because it's something that Olga knows a lot about mm -hmm. and like that people don't know a lot about. You as, as programmers, we tend to use like, oh, programming language, and then we just like implement things and we get paid. Mm -hmm. uh, but where did it all come from? We are gonna warm up by talking about Ada Lovelace. Yes. It's like she has such a, there's so many levels to her story. Like, for example, her father was Lord Byron. Like Who the, was Lord Byron? He was an author in England in the yeah. beginning of, is it called the 19th century? If it's like 1801. Like, I always yeah, mix like, that up. Which is it? <laughs> like or is it the seventh? No, it must be the 19th century because like, 18, oh, the, in the beginning of like 1801, it's like oh, the 19th yeah. is starting. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's like, yeah, one, so one to, to yeah. zero to, to 100 is the first century. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's like uh, yes. zeros and one. Where, where does the index begin? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah okay. okay. Go ahead. Sorry. So com confusing because okay. in Swedish, it's totally different. Anyway, oh. so he was uh, like a very flamboyant kind of man, uh, like a Swedish. A very famous like radio show talked about him as like the Mick Jagger of his time. Oh really? Yeah. Lord like, Byron. He was like a very like rock and rollish kind of person who drank a lot of booze, didn't take responsibility, and then like he, I think he married uh, Ada Lovelace's mother. Okay. And then they had Ada, mm -hmm. and when she was like one, I think her dad Lord Byron moved to Greece and like never saw her again because. Uh. The mother was like, she was like a mathematician oh. and she was like, I don't want that like very non-orderly person to have bad influence on my daughter. Oh, I un like, okay, I understand a joke now. Like I follow this amazing cartoonist. Okay. Uh, her name is Kate Beaton. Have okay. you seen her? No. Like she does like uh, historical uh, drawings or like a lot of com uh, comics around like historical figures. Hmm. Uh, I will check it out. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, and this is exactly about this, where mm. like Ada is not allowed to like fraternize with any poets, and she's exactly. like, yeah, it's like here, like go, it's like uh, uh, go play with your abacus. Like I've got you another. Yeah. Like I got you an abacus, but I already have so many. <laughs> like <laughs> no, but it oh. was because like her mom didn't want her uh, Ada's father to have like a bad influence on her because oh. she didn't want her to t turn out like her father. Ah, oh, makes sense. So her mom like uh, taught her a lot of math. She had tutors and stuff. But the thing was that like Ada was very curious and uh, mm -hmm. also not only like in the science stuff, but also in the art world. Yeah. So like she could play the violin and uh, she was like super good at playing pool. Oh, and like doing a lot of different kinds of things she, like w we wrote a little bit about her in the book and we kind of wrote about her as being like if, if she would have been alive today, she would have been like the best influencer ever because <laughs> she's like such a renaissance person oh, and yeah. talented and so many different kinds of skills. No, but like I think Leonardo da Vinci yeah. is like a, the kind of icon for a renaissance person because he was like a super skilled at painting, but also invented a helicopter. I digress. Yeah. Um, so like Ada, she lived in, I think in quite a like privileged world in England. Her family had money. So like, and she was a woman and she got still, she still got an education. Yeah. And I think that was like quite uncommon for women during that time. And so she had like uh, an acquaintance who was uh, Charles Babbage. And the thing was that he was like super obsessed about building this machine that like everybody was like, what the fuck are you doing? And he was like, I want to build a machine that can calculate things ah. because people suck at calculating because people get stuff wrong all of the time. So I want to build a machine that will get it right, like exactly the same. Uh, Every time. And Andreas Funk points out that this, like, this is called the difference engine. Exactly. Ah. Uh. Yeah. And he was, like, focusing so hard on doing that. I don't think he ever completed it. 
but he was like the idea of it yeah. really fascinated him. Ah, that's and, so interesting. And I find this such an interesting meta that he is known for like developing an idea that he never completed. Yeah. It's pretty cool and comforting to know that you can spend your entire life on like like chasing a ghost mm -hmm. and still be famous for the ghost chasing and it ends up being productive anyway. Yeah. Humanity is so cool that way, I think. Yeah, definitely. And like he had, but it's still a little sad at the same time because he had like no idea that that was going to happen 200 years later. I mean, oh, well. it would be so cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He knew. True, true. Yeah. So anyway, he was like building this machine and like when people were visiting his house, he was like, come see my awesome machine like I'm building it it's so cool look at all these things and it's metally and cool yeah. and everybody was like but why why do we need, even need this yeah like underscore Frank says it's it was so different from the ways of thinking at the time yeah. it's hard to fully appreciate just how out there these yeah, two were definitely but the thing was like when Ada actually saw that machine she was like blown oh, away. Oh, she got it. Because she course, got yeah. it. Because she was like, wait a minute. Like, if you have math, then you can actually like apply this math not only to math, but also to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Boom, 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 boom. And so they were like, th there's so many layers to this story, and it's so hard to kind of tell it from one point to another, but. Like another dimension of this whole thing was that both Charles Babbage and Ada Lovelace, they were super fascinated with looms. Oh, okay. That is why we had, was that why we had looms at Nordic Jazz? Exactly. Yeah. But the thing is, it wasn't because of that. Like it, the looms were there just randomly, but it turned out that it was like really cool that the looms were, were there. Oh, oh that it was, was like just unintentional, like a, ah, oh, super cool. cool thing that happened. Okay, oh, fair, fair enough. Yeah. All right. So like the thing with the looms was also that there was this like French guy, uh, Joseph Marie Chacard was his name. Yeah. And like he basically like started the Industrial Revolution. Oh, okay. Because he was like, he had a factory with a lot of looms where people would make fabric, like weave. Mm. So weaving is basically like you have this loom and you have like a lot of threads that you like put up. Yeah. And then you have like one thread that goes like back and forth, back and forth. Yep. And that's like e each new row. So you can think about it as like a when you know when you were visiting the internet when you were a kid yeah and the pictures would load like oh, one row at a time the, yeah, yeah the, the interlaced yeah. loading of the <laughs> exactly. gifs yeah oh yeah yeah it was like basically it's the same principle yep and you can kind of control like which colors are going to be there yeah. by either like going above or below the thread and from doing that like five million times you get like a piece of fabric so cool, right? Yeah, I never thought like, well, that's like, such a cool parallel. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, in order to make this happen, you had to have like people who were actually like every every row you did with the, the one thread. After it, in order to get the pattern you wanted, you had to have people like climbing on this loom yeah. and adjusting the threads up and down so that the pattern would come out like the yeah. way you wanted. And so he invented, like instead of having people changing that, yeah. you could have these like cards and these cards it was like a hard card it had mm. holes in it okay so it was basically a punch card like he invented the punch card what when was this yeah exactly when was this it's, i think it was like 1800 what yeah what yeah this is insane this is so cool right so punch cards were invented 1800 like yeah. in the 1800s if you if you google like the jacquard loom you will see this the machine ball. With the punch cards, and so like each <laughs> hole would like decide whether it, like the thread would go <sighs> above or below. Like if there was a <laughs> hole, go above. No hole, go below. It's like this is it's hilarious. Minus. This is amazing. Are you getting chills? Yeah, yeah. I'm getting I a am. little chills I from I telling know, the story know. from people. Yeah, like, yeah. Being so excited about this. This yeah. is wild. I know. Yeah. This is wild. It is so cool. Okay, but there's yeah, more. Yeah, I figured that you'd like that, Robert. You know? <laughs> uh, okay, um, but there's more. Yeah. So, like, what happens? 
like for one punch card you can only have like so many rows yeah and you need like a lot of rows to make a fabric so mm -hmm. he figured that if i take a lot of the punch cards and like tie them together yeah like next to each other like bam 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 yeah. and at the end you tie everything together you get like a loop yeah oh so he invented the for loop sort of yeah oh my god like the do while loop <laughs> oh my god so it was just like looping there and then you would have like the fabric coming out this is so cool um like by the way like the, the, i did an interview uh with um last year with uh, one of the main con uh, main contributors to knitting js which mm. is in like a javascript library for controlling looms Cool. Uh, or like, no, not loom, knitting, knitting. Machi knitting machines, yeah. knitting, which is not quite the same thing, but it's no, still, no. totally different. Yeah. I knit also. Yeah. Totally <laughs> like, different. Sorry. Yeah, no. Uh, no. No, but still like cool in the same category. Mm. To weave he, 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 mm. these sto two stories together, uh -huh. pun intended. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so like Ada and Charles, they were super, super fascinated by these looms yeah. and the punch cards. So they actually went on excursions to like um, factories where they had these looms and just like watch them. Oh my God. And Charles Babbage actually had uh, a loom with an image of himself hanging on his wall at home. <laughs> like a jacquard weaved loom, like weaved piece of fabric oh my God. with his own portrait. Hmm. And they kind of like saw this connection of this like insane fabric machine, like the loom, and this difference machine that he was making. Oh my God. And that like triggered something in Ada to start thinking about like building an algorithm. Oh, what's algorithms a thing? No, we, they, it couldn't possibly exist by this time. Like algorithms were actually a thing. Okay, for what? For math. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I suppose. Because, yeah, okay, so okay, yeah, 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 that makes sense. There's like a fun fact about algorithms. Mm. It was actually a Persian man who was named like Muhammad bin Al Karizmi who came to Europe and introduced a lot of like math concepts. Yeah. And like the Europeans, I don't know which country, but they were like, oh, we can't p pronounce your name, Al Karizmi, so you'll be algorithm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so anyway like the next step was that I don't know like it's not really known if it was Ada or Charles but Charles started started to build like a second machine yeah that was called the analytical engine okay and it was way more like generic than the difference machine because the difference machine it could only do like one thing it could calculate like the difference between some numbers like yeah. I'm not really sure what it did but it it was like a single purpose yeah. thing it was basically like a calculator yeah but like he started thinking about like okay what if I can turn this calculator into like a general machine mm. that can do like other things not only like calculate numbers but it yeah. can actually like use the numbers to do other things yeah and there are actually like letters from Ada Lovelace that she's written that are still um, like you can see them yeah where she's writing about like I wonder if you can use this like general machine to create music or like <laughs> paintings so she was like inventing mm -hmm. like garage band this is so nuts like the In vision the of these people I know is it's like staggering insane. yeah Unfortunately, she died when she was like only 35 from yeah, like ovary cancer yeah. or something. But didn't everybody die at like 35 yeah, then? <laughs> like that was a good, that yeah. was a good run in the 18th yeah, century. Yeah, that's maybe. true. Like, but imagine if she would have had like 10 more years oh, or like Jesus, five, five more years. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. what could she have invented then? Then we would have had flying fucking cars. Yeah. Oh, right. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello, hope you enjoyed that clip. If you like this kind of content, do consider joining our Discord at uh, funfun.chat and jump into maybe the uh, uh, on the job channel or the self care channel. Uh, they are uh, really, really nice spaces wherever you like it. Their whole Fun Fun Chat is such a cuddly and nice atmosphere where we support each other and uh, have a very good time. It's very big and very active. I think we're 
close to 1,400 members now. Uh, so I think that you should join the fun fun family. Or you know, maybe you just feel like watching more videos right now and then you should check out this one. <laughs>